You're listening to the Lone Star Play Podcast with your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Well, awesome, Don. Well, let's jump into just a little bit about like who you are. What, what, why do you think we brought you on the podcast? What, what made you think we, we got you on here? Um, that's a good question. Am I, I think y'all were, um, looking for creative people to, to talk with of just different. I've looked at the, at your channel. And, and so it looks like you have a mix of different creatives from different genres, like even acting music and things like Everything. that. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you're you're the first i want to say you're the first official like artist artist we've had on okay i think which is uh, which is great that's amazing i can't believe we haven't checked that box (laughs) off yet Um, well artists in the sense of i don't even know what you call that type of art uh physical art i don't know visual Uh, or yeah visual yeah (laughs) Yeah, i mean artists Granted, we've had on some musicians or whatever, but and they also do art. And not to take away from the, the art they do on the side, not to say it's not their main passion or whatever, but it's not the main thing they're known for, I guess I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, let's start there. Like, how did you become an artist, a working artist, mind you, internationally renowned um, <laughs> artist here? Okay, I've seen your stuff. It's <laughs> mind-blowing. So how do you go from right you're a child doesn't know anything about art to this Mm -hmm. full-grown adult who can put out what you put out let's go through that wow yeah that's that's, um so i i have early memories of just like any kid just you know learning how to use crayons and pencils and just draw a basic human figure like a stick figure or whatever and i don't know it just it seems like once i started um learning, just, just learning how to draw any kind of figure on a paper. I just really was, was into that. Um, I just really, really enjoyed doing it. And I kept working on it and got better at it. Like, like at school, like in elementary school, like if there was a, a, pro, a group project where we needed, you know, where, where we need to, I don't know, do make some type of drawing or some kind of art like then people would always pick me to be in their group but let's but say if it was sports or something like that then I would get picked last you know <laughs> um, so it was just something that um I enjoyed doing you know since childhood um and then others kind of gave me that validation that like oh she's good at this and so it just kind of fed that um I grew up in Lubbock Texas and um I, I guess you could say I was just pretty I didn't get to travel a lot as a kid or anything I was you know, pretty bored so I spent a lot of my childhood, just like looking through magazines, like I just loved kind of using magazines as sort of a window to the world. And then eventually um, what I saw in the magazines impacted what I was drawing. And I really started off drawing just, you know, just um, graphite pencil on paper for, for a long time. And um, I, I knew that I always I could envision myself being an artist when I grew up, but I had no no idea how to do that or it's been especially growing up in Lubbock um you know I had an uncle that did, that he was an artist but I know he did the uh, you know other job as well but I never knew anyone that just you know there was an artist that was that focused on show, showing in galleries and and doing art full-time as a career so I, I was always you know always wanted always, always wanted to please myself and my family, but it was always assumed, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to become a doctor, <laughs> you know, and then I'll just do art on the side or, or, la- or later somewhere else in the future. Um, and, and of course it, it didn't, it didn't work out that way. Um, <laughs> so, when, so, so then, so high school happens, graduate from high school, and then it's time to go to college. Um, and so I go to UT here in Austin um even then I was like oh I really want to major in art but I know that I know that my my mom would have been like what what is, what is, what are you doing no <laughs> you know so um you know I, I studied other things um I I was pre-med at first but then once it got to that organic organic chemistry it was like okay maybe maybe medicine isn't for me <laughs> um and and then I, I took uh, lots of classes in fashion design and I really loved that and I felt like I was flourishing creatively there, but um, I graduated with a psychology degree, just randomly. It's like, well, that, that sounds good. And then... Um, <laughs> that sounds good. I'll have yeah, one of those, please. 
yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like this was such a huge decision to make, like when you're 18, like picking a major and it's, you know, such that's an a great expensive point. thing. Yeah, that's um, a great point. So I thought, well, psychology sounds legit and maybe I can learn about myself, you know, or something. <laughs> sure. Uh, and, it won't hurt. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, so graduate, get my my undergrad degree. Um, then it's like, what do I do with my life? I know I, I still want to be an artist, but I'm like, where do I even start? And then there's that I felt the pressure to be in, in some type of like STEM profession, like an, an engineer or like I said earlier, a doctor or if not STEM, then like a uh, law. And so so I have this psychology degree um, and I'm working I'm working for the state. That's my first job out of college. Um, it's the, the job I did was was it was I was working to, I was a Medicaid eligibility specialist so I would um, oh, basically wow. help people apply for and make sure that they're they're qualified each year for their Medicaid benefits so that's, I did that for about a year for the state and then I was like I just want to do something else um, you know, I'm I'm not happy here if, even though I liked. Um, helping people but I just wanted I just wanted to do something more creative with my life um so but then I still have that pressure to to really feel like I'm doing something that would make my family proud and it would seem like I'm doing something so so I went to law school and so I went to law school in Houston at um Thurgood Marshall School of Law at Texas Southern and um that, that was an interesting time and it was just, it was just really hard um, but you know I pushed through it I was still doing my art while I was down there in Houston. Um, and one good thing about going to law school, I guess, was the fact that it put me in Houston because I met um, I met other I met working artists there who would later become mentors in the in the future. Um, so I was doing my I was doing my law studies and also working on my art. Um, one summer, I, um, like when you're in law school, you're supposed to do an internship during the summer. So. So one summer I came to Austin to do an internship at a, at a law firm here. And once they found out that I was, a, that I was an artist, they were like, Oh, could you, you know, do a portrait of my daughter or this and that. And so like, you know, I had like partners um, hiring me to do portraits of like their family and I was making wow. extra money that way. <laughs> wow. And um, finally I graduated from law school and I, 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 at that time I felt like I hated law. I didn't, I didn't want to, didn't want to practice law um and so i was like well okay well it's now or never now or never because i literally i had I had nothing um so me and my 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 boyfriend at the time he's now my husband but we decided well we'll just pack up and move to new york because like you know like why you know why not why nothing not? to lose yeah. at this time wow um wow. so we just packed up and moved to to new york just for the experience and um, he was doing photography. I'm doing my art thing, and it was an awesome experience. Um, you know, I got to show my work at a gallery in Harlem. Got to meet other artists, and, and even got to just sit down and talk to artists that I that I look up to. Or and just, or it was even special for me to just to go to an art opening and see an artist that I had been admiring for all these years. So, wow. so that was a great experience. But yeah. I went during. I went. To, I moved to New York during the. <laughs> during the economic downturn of like, of like around like 08, 09, when that oh, was happening. Wow. So it was yeah. like the worst, the worst possible time. But anyway, so, so um, new, moving to New York was awesome, but it was also a struggle. And because of that, um, we ended up moving back to Texas with the intent of moving back to New York. Um, so I moved back to Texas and then it was like, okay, so I know I want to be an artist, but you know, I still got to have, have, some way to make money as for my bread and butter. And um, that's when I got into journalism. Um, Cause my, my, my husband was into, he, he was a journalist. Um, uh, he's a, he was a news photographer at the time. So he told me, well, there's a job called there's um, producers for news. So that may be something you could do. Cause you have a, you have your law degree and you have a lot of you know different experiences. And so producers kind of do a lot of different things. So, so I became a TV news producer for many years and, during that time, um, I just felt kind of dis discouraged about being an artist, um, discouraged because of the hustle. I hate, hated the hustle of of trying to be an artist, I guess, um, I guess commercially or, you know, getting my stuff seen. So I was like, OK, I'm just going to focus on 
building stability in my life. Um, I'm just going to quit doing art. You know, I just, I don't want to see any art. I don't want to hear anything about art ever. Wow. And so when it turns out you really can't avoid art in your life, you know, you can't avoid art. Um, <laughs> but, but, I, but I just, I did this, you know, I worked in news for many years and for, for about five years or so, like I really just w- was hardly making any art at, at all, just focusing on the daily grind of working and, and I just was feeling, I still was feeling like this something missing, like not fulfilled. And, and then finally it was one day, like I just said, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be an artist. And then, you know, I really started just claiming it and started small um, working on a painting I started long ago and just finished up that painting. And then from there, um, you know, I stopped giving up on art and just continued. And that, and that's how, that's how I ended up where I am right now. <laughs> wow. What a what a trajectory! I mean, yeah, and that's right? a lot of stuff I left out. But yeah, it's, it's been a roller coaster of a ride. Sure, sure. I mean, so your goal was you, you wanted to be paid to be an artist. It wasn't that you wanted to be an artist. You wanted to be a paid artist. Does that is that is that feel more legit in the art world? Does that does that make you feel more like? Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say. I mean, you get it, right? Like you get it. Why? Is yeah. It, why does an artist do a piece? Is it for themselves? Is it to get it paid to get it seen by others? Is good art only to be seen by others, right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Where, where does that stand? I'm, I'm curious. I mean. Yeah, I really, I, my feelings about that have, have evolved and changed over time. Um, because at some point when I was younger, I thought, okay, well, maybe you're not legit unless you're doing doing art full time. And so it was always like this um you pressure know, press right? to like do it full, full yeah. time. I think for me, for me, it, it came down to, I just didn't want to do any other job. At least that's how I was feeling before. Like your time spent on it, right? Like you don't want to be time spent. You'd rather it be doing art. And and for that to happen, you got to pay bills. You got this. So money's almost inevitable, right? Yeah, I understand. So I just wanted a way to to make art, um, spend most of my time making art, but yet still have money at at the same time. So that's why it made sense to to be able to make money from the art. But then that, that also adds, that does add some extra complications and pressure to art at, at the same time too so yeah it's all it's all yeah it's just it's a lot it's a lot to to think about and kind of juggle for sure yeah absolutely I, i'm i'm personally not of that mindset that like if you make money on your art you sold out and this it's like well what was the point you know you always hear about those mm-hmm. bands like oh they made it they sold out well what did you want yeah. them to do they're trying right. to get bigger and more people to hear it. What did you want them mm-hmm. to do? Only you to listen to the albums? They release yeah. them to you only? That makes no sense. Why wouldn't you want to support someone and see their music? I, I don't. I think they just look at it the wrong way. Like, oh, they sold mm-hmm. out. They're taking all this money. No, think of it as their art will now be heard or seen or whatever by more people. Mm-hmm. That, that's how I think of it. Like a restaurant. See, I'm a chef. I come from the chef world, and that's an art to me. And... Mm-hmm. I always hate when people are like, oh, there's great taco place I got. Where is it? I don't want to tell you because it's my secret. Why wouldn't you want to? <laughs> you do, you're trying to keep yeah. that small business from making money. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you want to line out the door Yeah, uh, for them? You know what I mean? I don't, and I don't like that mindset, but I, I understand where it comes from, but it's a little selfish as fans of, of <laughs> you know, of art. It is. It's selfish because it's like, <laughs> no, no, only for me and my friends and it's cool and now that more people know about it, well, it's not as cool anymore. Well, wait a second. I don't, you know, I just, I don't I, know. I think, not, not a fan. I think where it gets complicated is, um, I guess you, you, were, you were talking about how people feel about musicians. Like, well, when some people think they so-called like sell out or not. I, I, and for me as a, as a person that, that enjoys music and as a person that is an artist, um, I, I can see where, where people get annoyed when a musician, like, I guess, where they seem to water down like what they were doing before for the purpose sure. of of okay. being uh, uh, being more <laughs> I guess easily digestible for the masses. Sure. I get that, and that and that could happen with you know, of course, with visual artists too. And sure. for me, that for me, it's really important to to work on things that that I truly that I truly enjoy, and and not just do stuff just for the sole purpose of of making money. So I, I definitely want to. Fortunately, fortunately, I've been able to do that so far, and I definitely want to just keep that balance because even if I, if I was to do something that that involved me, I don't know, changing my style or just doing some 
project only for the purpose of making money. Like I know I, I would just be miserable and resenting the whole thing and, you know, just unhappy the whole time. So it's definitely a, a, a balance that I, that I find, I feel it's important to try to strike for, for myself at least. No, no, that, that's actually a great nuanced point. It's about the authenticity, right? So I think, mm -hmm. yes, and there is something to say to that as an artist grows, their message, like you said, gets watered down. They're trying to uh, broader appeal and, and maybe it's not as authentic anymore. Um, but some artists can do it and maintain that authenticity. And I, I think you're right mm -hmm. about that. I think as a fan, there is something to say of that. You like them for this reason. And now they're up here and they're just not that same thing anymore. Like what happened? Right. That I totally get. But it's more just the artist that like is sort of the same or maybe got better. And you're yeah. like, like the production value went up and this, oh, their music videos. Yeah. Are bad. This is bad. They were able to hire these artists. And think about this way. They're able to employ more artists that way. Right? That's true. That's I always true. give like the MC Hammer story. MC Hammer was, you know, you, you were born in 1980. I read I was born in 79. Uh -huh. So we're pretty much the same age. Yeah. Um, and I remember MC Hammer blowing up in the 90s and going on tour. And the big thing that I loved about him, even in my teenage years, was like he was all about bringing everyone from you know, his town and, and his family and friends. Yeah, like it ended that. up costing him in the end, to be honest yeah. with you, because he did it too much. But yeah. that mentality of bringing everybody, and I don't think he, right, he didn't see it as selling out. He's like, I'm bringing this in so I can help and, and bring more people yeah. along. So I think you're right. It's balance. It is up to the artists themselves. It's up to the fan to decide equally, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you feel about this? Like when an artist puts out a piece, are you trying to control how that piece is interpreted? Does that make sense? Like what, uh, what, like rephrase so, that. Okay, so let's say you put out a painting, right? Are you trying to tell people what that painting means and this and that, or do you just want people to go up and take it for what it, whatever they think of it is? Does that make sense? Like the meaning behind whatever, you know what I mean? Is there yeah, a right I, or wrong interpretation? Is, is I guess is what I'm getting at. There... I would say that I, I re ultimately I, I love to just put out a, a put out an an image and then let people interpret it however they want and find find their own meeting with that and so and so far that's been pretty much the case except I do feel there's so, there's so there is a lot of um, well pe people are going to ask me what 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 does this mean and blah 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 so there is sure. there is some some level of pressure to explain things. And, and I know when I was first, when I first started, started doing art, I guess, professionally, as far as like showing in galleries and doing artist talks, um, I wasn't, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. So I thought, well, I guess I'm supposed <laughs> to, you know, supposed to break some stuff down and this and that. Sure. So I, I, I try my best to kind of, I guess, break, break things down a bit more um, step by step. But then, but then as more time went on and I saw, I saw okay, I, I don't really have to divulge this much information or I don't really have to um, reveal, you know, this and that. And, and I, I'd rather not reveal too much, although I don't mind um, just giving a general a general idea of how this piece came about. Um, sure. I would, I would much rather people interpret it. Um, but I would but I would I wouldn't be happy to see, I guess, maybe where someone took. Maybe it took something like the total wrong, like total, I guess you guys said there's a wrong way. I mean, I want to say no, but like, I would hate if like, yeah, if there was, if someone saw something like completely, I guess, negative in the piece that was totally like the like the opposite of what I was sure. trying to do. But that, that hasn't really happened so far. But, but, but generally I do like to leave it, leave it open and let people find meaning. And sometimes someone will say something about a piece and, 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 I'll be like, you know, that that's that's true. I hadn't even thought about that, but yeah, that's that's true. that makes sense. And that probably is why I did X, Y, Z or something. So, so I do like it to be open. Yeah, no, that that I mean, you make you make a great, uh, you're very good about nuancing these points. Uh, this is your law degree coming out here. I love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I finally no, use but, it for something, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And to be fair, I, I think everything's nuanced in life. To be honest, every mm -hmm. discussion, you know, it's it's it. It's, you could start breaking it down, right? So, yeah, that that's a great point. It's almost like, um, you know this happens to film directors all the time, right? They put out a movie. What does this movie mean? What did that ending mean? And every director's different. They're like, this is what it means in a box. There's mm -hmm. nothing else. Right. Um, or others go, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think happened? What do you think it means? What does mm -hmm. it mean to you? 
you know, and depending on your experiences, what you've been through, it's going to mean different things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's just how it is. You know, you, you see a, in a film, uh, someone going through cancer and having this struggle. If you've had that in your family or if you struggle, that's going to mean something totally different to you than someone who has no experience with that. And maybe that's what mm -hmm. you focus on. Um, I'm all about just leaving it up to interpretation. Yeah, me personally. I like, like that. When I put out a dish to eat, my hands are off. It's up to you now. Do you like it or you don't? I, I can't control whether you like it or not. I can tell you why I, I'm, in, like you said, why I'm inspired to make it, why I brought mm -hmm. those components together and my, me, you know, my thought behind it. But past that, I, I cannot control you. And nor do I really mm -hmm. want to. I, my work yeah, is same. done. You know what I mean? My work is done, mm -hmm. man. I'm, I'm all about what it does for me personally mm -hmm. and then now it's your turn you know sort of thing but yeah that's that's, that's you know, how i feel too you know but every artist uh, to themselves you know every artist has their own way of wanting to do things and i've worked with chefs that they will watch you eat the whole meat and t hey, this is how eat it this way put it in your mouth this way <laughs> whoa 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 geez i mean unless it's like gonna completely ruin the dish you can suggest this is how i would eat it mm -hmm. but I mean, honestly, at that point, it's up to you because chefs like to do a lot of what they call deconstruction and then you construct mm -hmm. it at the table, which, I, you know, I'm well, not really a fan of that. <laughs> it is. It's a little more work when I'm trying to eat. It's like, OK, that, listen, <laughs> I came for you to make the meal for me, not for right. me to put this together at the table. <laughs> right. uh, you know, like, I, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, there was this place in uh, Irving, Texas here that when I was growing up called You Are Cooks. And I always hated that restaurant because you walk in and they put you to work. They put you an apron, wow. here's the meat and vegetable, and you cook it yourself. I was like, I can do this at home. Why exactly. am I eating? <laughs> but people loved it. They just were all about it. Um, so again, teach their own at the end of the day. Um, you yeah. know, it's like feedback, right? When you get if you get feedback for art, which they do that for food, right? Food mm -hmm. reviews, this, that. It's a weird art Be because not all places that serve food are serving art in my opinion. Mm -hmm. oh, and, no. and the people running it would say that too, right? Like, what do you mean? I'm making tacos here. Uh, but some yeah. other guys like, no, 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 I studied, I did that. I'm doing these techniques. I got the, mm -hmm. you know, these ingredients from here and blah. And there's a whole story before you even put the first bite in. So, uh -huh. right. There's this whole level of it, um, w which is interesting. Um, so yeah, you just kind of go with it that way. You know, I, I, that's what I love about art is it's, this is the question I'm going to ask you, and I'm curious if you have an answer. I, I, I'll give you mine first, which is I don't think art can be defined. Do you like when someone says, what is art? I, I don't I find that sort of a like you, an unanswerable question. I, I don't know what you feel about that, because I'm sure you get asked that. Yeah. I, you can. Yes, art art can be can be can be so many things that it is hard hard to hard to define what what exactly is art because yeah at a certain especially with I guess with that idea of conceptual art that's 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 a thing you know it literally yeah literally can be anything um, there's I guess there are certain things that come to mind like come to mind um, for lots of people when you when you when they think of art. Um, like they're they're expecting if it's like see that I was about to say they're, they're expecting to see something but you don't even have to see something for it to to be art but but people would be expecting some type of sen sensory experience sensory experience that That's that they are going to that they're going to yeah look at uh, look at look at and experience so yeah it, it is it is hard it is hard to define what it is even for me. Um, I mostly I mostly painted um, throughout my life, but I've gotten to a point where I feel I felt really confined. I mean, I enjoy making the work, but um, now I'm at a point where I want to I, I want to do more. Like I feel confined within like the four sided canvas or or whatever. So interesting. Now I'm wanting to ex experiment in a, in a way that where, where I don't feel like I just it's like okay, here's a canvas. Um, Put something on there, and that's that's my art. Like I want, I um, I want to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to do more, and so, and so that's that's what I, that's where I'm at. I'm at right now. Like even behind me, I have this um, paper paper painting happening, but I'm, I'm I'm experimenting with that. Just what what 
what can I do with paper that's um, maybe not what what's expected? So um, so yeah, I just I just have this desire to go go beyond you know the beyond the square canvas or whatever. No, I I, I get that. Um, you feel boxed in, you know, yeah. from these lines. But there's also something to be said about that too. I think there could be a beauty in that too, right? Like mm -hmm. you're forced into this you know, box. Um, again, it happens with food too. I'll always bring everything back to food. The same thing. It's like that, that there's, I guess there's, there's both, but you've already done mm -hmm. that. Right. So it's like, I'm, I'm ready for something new. I'm ready to exactly. right, expand these wings a little more and let's do something yeah. else. And because if you were the other way, you might be like, I'm ready for a confined space a little bit, but mm -hmm. let me get in there and do that. So I love that. I love that. Um, I'm sure any fans of yours and any new fans that you'll have will appreciate that too as well. Right. And just for yourself, just for yourself, pleasing yeah, yourself, I mean, right? I, you're going to get the best, your fans are going to get the best art out of you if you're the most into it, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, I I, I definitely think so. It, it's, and what you said is true, but at the same time, for especially for someone like me, I, I you know, I have a lot of, a lot of anxiety um, naturally and like, and that, that can be something that's, that can be scary, I guess, at first, because I, you know, even though I want to ultimately create something for for me, but you know, but I also um, I also hope that I do hope that people can get some type of value or entertainment or or something sure. out of it, and so I hope sure. that it works in that way. And so, um, so that's where I'm at. I'm at right now. I'm working on something new that may be less expected, and that I don't know how I don't know how that will. Um, I don't, I don't know how that will work in the world yeah or be or sure. be received sure i understand um I, I think part of the journey of just being a human being is is facing those fears and that anxiety and still going for it right those are the best moments so mm -hmm. all power to you that's awesome that you're doing that to be honest with you yeah i think that's great uh just pu push yourself to the limits a little bit you know put yourself in an uncomfortable zone and what kind of art comes out of that because mm -hmm. when you're most comfortable maybe your art is limited yeah you know, that's in a true. sense you know so so making it and, and i like the idea of the expectation part because i think again although i personally and i feel it's up to every person i personally don't think art can be defined for me personally the best art is subverting expectations and and i like that you know yeah. i wasn't expecting this but mm -hmm. i love it you yeah. know that that's good art to me i would have never mm -hmm. in my wildest dreams come up with this and but this person did their lens through the world you know their vision is here and i get to see it and i find beauty in that myself so yeah I, that's that's awesome that, that's really cool man yeah you mentioned the fears like that's i mean that the the that word i mean that's been something that's um that's really kind of unfortunate I, I think set it's really kind of set the tone for i guess what I what I did in my life, kind of almost in an unfortunate way, I feel. I don't know. Like I feel that I've been so just so af afraid of you know afraid of even applying applying for an opportunity you know with my art or, or this and that. And so it's really in the past has really like held me back in a lot of ways. Um, and so I, I don't know what I was waiting for. If I was waiting just for some validation that says, "Dawn, you you can do this. Like it's okay. You 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 you're you are." you deserve to be up there or something like that. And so that's been, that's been something that's been, you know, crippling at, for me at times. Um, I do feel at this point, I feel more, more I guess the, the most confident that I ever have with my art, just because I've been, I've been, been doing it. I've been doing it. Um, you know, I was able to, to leave my day job. That was, that was something that, that I really wanted to do at the time and, and um, sure. been able to sustain uh, myself, um, you know, making, making money through, all right, so it's helped me to pay bills and, and it's helped help to finance my future future projects. Um, and it seems like, you know, the world is receptive to, to what I do. So I have to keep keep reminding myself of that. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely something that I have to constantly work on. Honestly, that's what makes you a great artist is the is that, you know, don't lose that. I, and that may be a hard way to live, but that's probably what makes <laughs> your art the best, to be frank, you know, because of because of that, you're working in that mentality that may feel like a, you know, a glass floor with cracks in it. Mm -hmm. But again, that uncomfortableness a little bit is what, you know, 
ends up on the canvas. It ends up popping on, on the art you're doing and people are receptive to it, you know? And I think if you ever got to the point where you're like, yeah, everything I put out is the shit and I'm the shit and I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, hello, Kanye, right? It's like, you start to lose a little bit of like, damn, okay, you are good, but stop saying it. Mm -hmm. You know, like stop. It, it's, it will ruin your art, I think, because you uh -huh. lose, I think you lose perspective. I think you lose, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? A little yeah, I can ground, see grounded in reality, you know, grounded mm -hmm. in like life. And, um, yeah, you know, you know, some of the best artists were broken people, probably, you know, mm -hmm. if you look back at time and, yeah. and how it goes. And, you know, why is that? Because that ends up on their art. And that mm -hmm. becomes fascinating because as normal people, quote unquote, I don't know, I don't know if I like that word, but whatever I'm using <laughs> right now, you know, the average person who doesn't do art, they, mm -hmm. they can never get to that. Right. So to them, it's absolutely fascinating, but you're also watching, you know, I don't know, someone who almost like their problems end up on the canvas sometimes, but that mm -hmm. can be cathartic for the artist. I'm sure I've heard that a lot from artists. It's cathartic. Yeah. And, and I get that. Um, and I find that fascinating when you're looking at a piece, you can almost see into their past and see their troubles, mm -hmm. you know, their joys, what they've been through. Yeah. Um, and, and that's fascinating. It's like time travel, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's almost one of those things where if you think about it too much, you'll ruin it. But if you don't uh -huh. think about it enough, you'll also ruin it. So like you, the same yeah. thing you said back before balance, it's mm -hmm. just about this balance. And that, that is fascinating. You know, what's this new piece you're working? Like what, what is it? Is it the paper? You said the paper, are you trying to go, you said outside the floor, are you trying to do like a wall or so? I don't even know what that means when you say outside of a canvas. Yeah, that's, and I'm, I'm even trying to figure out what, you know, what that means for me. Um, so this, so I'm working on, paper pieces and I and I like the idea of working on paper because first first of all when it comes to canvas like one thing that annoys me about canvas is like um you know like for for me like if I want to to do a, to make a painting on a big canvas um well that involves um for like stretching the canvas and like that's a whole a whole process that, that I hate doing <laughs> and, and and you could I mean I could pay someone to do it but I'd normally just do it myself because I guess I'm just I end up just doing that like I just like I'll just do it myself I don't want to wait and this and that and sure, I hate stre I it. stretching it and then um canvases are so they're, they're organic because of, you know it's wood and uh, you know the the canvas fabric and like they it's just so so finicky um just you know how the the, the wood you know changes over time and you know like it tightens and loosens and I just hate dealing with with all that. I just want to paint, but but of course, any any material you work on is going to have issues. And, you know, sure. it's going to change over time. But I was drawn to paper because, like, it's there's no I don't have to stretch it on canvas. You just it's just there, you know. And then I can also easily change the shape of the paper, um, you know. So so I want to maybe go go beyond just the square or, or the rectangle, and it, I it, I can easily do that with paper and. And it's also just easier to deal with. Like I could just roll it up and you know put it in the corner or something like that. Whereas, you know, canvas usually. I mean, you can roll up canvas, but usually I'll, I'll keep it on the wooden stretchers because you take it off and you got to put it back on, and that's a sure. pain. Um, so, so paper is is going to be convenient for me, and um, I just feel like I can stretch my imagination a bit more. Um, and I, I'm still going to work with canvas, but I want to find ways to work with it that work with work with canvas in a more unexpected way so i think okay. that once i figure out what that's going to be i think that's going to be i think that's going to be really fun um but also whatever i do like it's, you still have to think about practicality a little bit just like you know how will this um i don't know yeah how will this be displayed or how will it last sure. you know and all that but but I'm excited just to work with um, work with work with paper and canvas in ways that aren't that aren't the traditional ways of using them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm just spitballing here, but maybe someone needs to come up with a different shape for these paintings instead of square rectangle and that be the yeah. new thing, or you know, doing something else with mm -hmm. it, right? Like I love that idea. Um, why aren't there triangle ones? Mm -hmm. It's easy enough to do. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> Or, uh, you know what I was just thinking in my mind? Um, I was thinking like something that changed shape. 
So a person uh, could have it in their head and they could change the shape of that canvas somehow. Yeah, I don't know how you that, would do that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. You know, so I've it's seen, just I've seen some round ones and some some triangle ones, but, but for some reason they're not as not as common. I know, I know like probably I think building a round canvas, I know that's probably it's probably more complicated, I guess, in, as tar- as far as like the wood or something. I don't know. Sure. But um that would be I'd cool, right? Yeah, like I mean, I definitely want to do. Um, I definitely am into doing different shapes, um, things that are asymmetrical. Um, sure. Just, sure. just you know, some, just something else. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Um, look, the same way a chef is like, you know what? I'm tired of using plates. I'm going to, you know, because the traditional is like food on a plate. Yeah. Right? It's like paint on a canvas. Okay. Yeah, that's like the a, canvas. Yeah. And a chef's like, you know what? I'm going to use a brick and put it on. I mean, seriously, or <laughs> this or that or a rock or mm-hmm. a whatever they come up. And I like that stuff. I'm into that. You know, I'm, uh-huh. I'm let, let's change it all. Let's let's just mm-hmm. take it from the ground up. And, you know, instead, you know what? Make the plate food and the brick I have to eat. Well, now we're really getting crazy, you know, yeah, like something. Yeah. St- I mean, that's a little ridiculous, but you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, if I was an artist and doing that, man, that's all I would think about is how do I do this so different than how mm-hmm. everyone's doing it? But that's also why I'm not an artist, because um, I would probably never get anything done. And I'm just not good at that stuff. I'm not creative like that. Um, I look at the stuff you've done and I think, wow, how does someone how does someone come up with that it's i mean beautiful the stuff you've made is like beyond beautiful it's like it sticks in your head and it it gets you thinking and it i don't know it's just something about it i think um you know you tap into something into somebody and again every art's different for somebody but when i look at yours it just taps into something that it sticks in my mind it lingers and i think about it longer and it makes me think about the story and uh, you know, all these different things. And I, and I looked at a lot of your different pieces and they're all just so unique and um, just fascinating. And I find that just such a fascinating talent uh, that somebody can have, to be honest with you, uh, that can do that, you know, and the fact that you're willing to share that with the world, because you don't have to, you don't have to share that with the world and no, we would never get that joy, but you do. <laughs> you're not selfish. You're like, you know what? I want people to see this. I want people to mm-hmm. be inspired. I want people to feel this way. And, and I love that. And I respect that. Um, and I know there's a lot of artists out there like that, but I've also met artists that just aren't like that at all. Don't think that way. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we need more artists like you is what I'm trying to get at for sure. Well, I'm glad, way. I'm glad to hear that you said it sticks in your mind. That's definitely something that, that I think is good for, for me, as far as like my goals, I definitely would like my work to be something that's, memorable or in, impactful in some way and as far as like the what you see it um it kind of it goes back to you know being a kid in Lubbock um looking through magazines especially love looking at fashion magazines um and I and I didn't I didn't know why I was so drawn to fashion adver- advertisements but I, I was always studying fashion advertisement just um the look, uh, just, just just the look, the, the 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 lighting. Even though at the time I didn't understand, really understand lighting or anything like that, but now I realize it's the, the lighting, um, the poses, and and so a lot of um, the way that the aesthetic of how my work appears is 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 um, influenced by um, fa- fashion photography, especially especially from like the the eighties and nineties. Um, sure. You know, because I grew up looking looking at looking at a lot of like. Um, Versace advertisements, or or even in the nineties, like the like the the CK one, the CK one advertisements, yeah. um, like sure. they were black and white, um, yeah. you know, very yeah, very right. simple, um, and and yeah, I mean, and at the time I didn't I didn't understand like you know how this works, but, but now I realize okay, it's, it was probably just a few a few photographers that were taking all these pictures that I was you know admiring you know all this time and. And so um, I was really intrigued by that. And then as I got older, I learned more. And it's like, wow, but like the fashion industry, like that, there's a, a very much a, a dark side to all that. And they're really trying to trying to sell this image to you so that you'll want to go, so that you'll feel a certain way and then buy that stuff so that you'll feel better or so that you'll feel, I don't know, more rich or like, yeah. something <laughs> like that. But but as right. I get older, it's like, okay, I, I realized what that was all about. But, but essentially I was drawn to the, the aesthetic and how it how it made me feel and um and what made me a, attracted to to those images 
Yeah, and and you know they're they are trying to sell you something, right? And they are trying mm -hmm. to force you into a certain interpretation of that. Um, mm -hmm. So it is a different kind of art, you know. It, but that it yeah. inspired you is great, right? Like that these things, yeah. That that's that's just so cool. Um, well, look, before we, you know, we're getting up on kind of an hour here. I want to make sure we talk about the AI thing because I'm just I'm so curious of your mm -hmm. opinion on. Yeah, what just what is your opinion on AI art? What what do you think of this medium that's that's popping up here? I think I, I started I started using um mid -journey, mid journey to see what all the hype was about to see like how you know how does it work? What do you do? And it's so it's actually it's just so fun, like almost as like entertainment to be able to like type in some words and you know interpret that and, and you get this image. I'm like, that is that is so cool. Um there and we were talking, you know, talking about nuances, and so there are a lot. I think you know a lot that come into play there. Like, like essentially, I can see it. it I can see AI um, art being definitely a a tool that can be used. And yeah, I can I can definitely see companies just using that, using that, the using the output from this from AI as their art for what for their projects. But I, I've heard, I've, I know a lot of uh, well, I've I've seen online at least a lot of artists that are concerned about. Oh, I don't we're not going to need artists anymore or, or yeah, you know, and correct. I definitely, I, I don't, I don't agree with that. Just, you know, I, at least as, as from based on what I see now, because I think when, when someone is appreciating or wanting the work of an artist, then they, they, they want, they want, you know, those experiences I've had that, that human, that, that human touch from, from a real person. But I do feel like AI could be definitely, definitely, um, used as a tool, it could be used as a tool to help uh, someone do art with with, with their hands too. So, um, and but then, and there's also the issue um, of the, like the possible copyright issues that are coming up. Like yeah, like yeah. if it's if it's pulling from the work of other artists to make to make new AI work. Um, like yeah, is, is that you know is is that wrong or is is that stealing so that I, that's that's kind of definitely a complex issue and i'm wondering how how that will will play out cuz if it cuz like I, I i don't know if an example any examples of like where oh hey that they took my painting and used it. I, I got i haven't seen yeah i don't i don't know but but if if i i'm i'm trying to think of like how like how 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 would i feel if i felt that my art if I, if i felt my art was being stolen in order to create ai, AI images like i definitely wouldn't like that um so yeah it, it is it is complicated it is complex and i think it's just so new um but 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 for now i think it's just fun to kind of see what what it spits out yeah well what a great answer um yeah <laughs> uh yeah absolutely um i you know i will say this i, I mean i i did a podcast all about it and i got really deep into it and just uh, you know I'll I'll quickly just give a few points that I think I I compare it to I just see it as a new subgenre of art. So this is my comparisons. I say well, art literally started with probably blood on a rock and you know and mm -hmm. and when a first paintbrush came out, people might have been mad about that. Whoa, whoa what's uh -huh. this paintbrush I got? I I'm where's my hands? You know, it's not going to be mm -hmm. art no more. And yeah. then the best example I give is well, photography. When the camera mm -hmm. was invented, portrait artists lost their jobs. A lot of them did mm -hmm. because now people are like, well, I want a photograph. I don't want yeah. the portrait artist anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we took a single photograph and said, well, let's put a bunch of them together. It's called a moving picture. Mm -hmm. And then we said, well, let's add sound to it. Right. Uh -huh. And now we got that. So I think art just yeah. changes, right? It just comes, yeah. these new mediums come in and we just kind of got to accept it. I mean, take an artist now, mm -hmm. time traveling back 400 years ago. And they might not think they're an artist, right? Uh -huh. Like a person back in that day would be like, you're not an artist, this is art, right? So, uh -huh. and I think every, a lot of new artists that come up are always trying to subvert the expectations of what is art. So that's why you see mm -hmm. a banana taped to a wall and someone's like 250 <laughs> grand, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And so then everyone's confused of, well, what is art then? Is it, you can just tape something to a wall and that's art. Um, uh -huh. and then, you know what I mean? I think that's why the world's confused on whether yeah. this is good or not, because I think the art world, and I'm not saying they did it on purpose, but the art world sort of has themselves to blame for the confusion in the rest of the world of like, what is yeah. art? You know what I mean? In the sense that 
you know, from the average person, when they see things on this, oh, that's art, but this is also, wait, what's yeah. happening here? I could do that. I could go tape a, a tangerine to a wall yeah. and, and call it art. I mean, why am I not doing that? Well, well, because yeah. he had a meaning behind it. Well, what would I, I got meanings too, you yeah. know? Um, so I don't know. It's right. It's one of those things that I personally don't see anything wrong with it, but I totally see I can totally relate to the, hey, what, what about opportunities? Is this going to be a loss mm -hmm. of opportunities for artists? And you, you can look at that technology in other industries, right? The car yeah. industry, this industry, tech coming up, robots coming in and taking, oh, I'm not going to have a job anymore, right? Yeah. So I get it. I, I can understand those fears. It, it, you yeah, know? it might be. I agree. It, it might. I think it could be a loss of opportunity for for some people, because I, I definitely, could, I definitely, could, I'm sure some people are using that AI technology to, to you know, to not inst instead of having to hire a graphic designer or, sure, you know, or, or a photographer or someone. So yeah, I think it would be some loss of opportunities. Yeah, um, but you yeah. could see others pop up. Maybe more people are like, you know what, that's that's great at AI, but I, mm -hmm. like you said, I want the human touch. I, I'm yeah. not going to get that. Look at the resurgence of vinyl. We we mm -hmm. like tradition. You know, we we do like certain things that stand the test of time. And mm -hmm. I personally don't think like quote unquote real art is going anywhere. I mean, no, we, me neither. We've, right? We've loved it for thousands of years. Look at museums. The the pieces mm -hmm. that we covet the most are the oldest and this artist who died. And it's not like oh no, Joe Smith made this in Indiana and it's in the museum mm -hmm. right here. No, no, no. Right. We're looking at pieces from the past. So I don't see that going anywhere. Yeah. But, but again, as a, you know, I, I totally can understand the concern of loss of opportunity or loss of, you know, nobody's going to want, you know, real human art. And I think you said it best. It's just new. It's so mm -hmm. new that we just don't know what to do with it. You know, but yeah. I think if you compare it to paintbrush, even the canvas when that came out, I'm sure was mm -hmm. disturbing to some people. Whoa, whoa. Got to paint on this canvas. <laughs> what is this about? I, yeah. Uh, what about my tablets over here? These are awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I really think, and digital art, right? I'm sure when yeah. digital art came out, other artists were like, well, that's not real art. And they're like, yeah. no, it is. Um, I just had these animators on who worked on uh, uh, the Minnow. They're there in Austin. They worked on um, Richard Linklater's new film that came mm -hmm. out. So, so that studio made the animation and they got denied by the Academy Awards, the, the Oscars. Like you're not, you're not real animation. So you can't be considered. And they were like, oh, wow. what? We made an animated film. What do you, so they, they literally, it was all in the news. They, they went, we brought them on the podcast. Oh, I got to talk to these guys. They went and they showed all the evidence of history of animation and art and all these things. And like, no, what we're doing is, is art too. And, and they won, they won the appeal. Oh, wow. they, they got to be put in the list. Right. Um, so, you know, I think there's also two from the artist side, Hey, fight a little, you know, stick up, mm -hmm. like maybe come to, if you do feel there's something there, then come together and go. And I will say there, um, for those listening and watching, like there is a new class action lawsuit out there, uh, from a couple different, I don't know who's putting it together, but they're yeah. trying to come out and figure that out, the copyright issues. And, and I can yeah. understand all those things, right? It's nuanced. Mm -hmm. It's new. We'll figure it out. Yeah, that's right. That's where I think. Uh, but I think, um, like yeah, you said, I, it's exciting to just type stuff yeah, in there and see what comes out. For now, it's just exciting to type stuff in, and yeah, yeah. and yeah, we'll see what happens with that class action lawsuit. Because yeah, at the same time, yeah, there need to be some some Absolutely. protections there. Yes, um, I get. You know what I think of like a cover song, right? So a band covers a song. It's not going to be literally how that band covered the song because now they're mm -hmm. covering it. And what do they do? They have to give royalties to that past artist. It's mm -hmm. just how it works. That's how bands yeah. cover songs. So there could be something like that. Oh, if you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna create a database of all this art, no problem. Uh, every piece that you pulled into your database needs to have a set, you know, royalty, whatever. And if that yeah. image gets you, and it's all digital, so the AI mm -hmm. would know exactly what images, right, were were brought in. Mm -hmm. uh, the royalties could go out that way, maybe. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know. You know. Yeah, but if there's some way to make it fair, you know, I'm, sure. I'm, yeah, I'm totally down and, and yeah, it is fun to experience. But you're not scared of it. I think it. it can be, yeah, not at all. I mean, I've seen, I've seen some posts on Reddit where some artists seem to be really flustered about it. Oh yeah, it's um, huge. But, like it's, yeah. But yeah, I don't really feel, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's because I'm not primarily a, a digital artist, but it seems like maybe more 
graphic or digital artists were, um, were that's a good upset point, about actually. it, but, yeah, that's but I don't point. really feel any, uh, yeah, I don't feel <laughs> sculptors are like, that. it ain't, it ain't affected me. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well, there'll probably be some way to do like probably some AI 3d printed, you know, things. Oh, too, shit. You know? <laughs> That's probably oh shit <laughs> you're right you're right holy yeah. shit you just gave someone an idea don oh my <laughs> yeah. god I'm sure i never thought of that. that you're right yeah. i never thought of that um wow that's yeah. a great point uh, <laughs> oh shit those sculptors like i thought i was safe Fuck. yeah what exactly so uh, look it happens in the food industry too they're always bringing in new technologies and new things to replace uh <laughs> but at the end of the day you're always going to want a, a real person to come in and cook you some food yeah. exactly exactly so, yeah i think you're right don this has been amazing um yeah i've i've really enjoyed this conversation it flew by for me um that's how i know i do a yeah, good, good podcast i look up i'm like oh shit i we didn't even get to ai i was like what happened I know. oh my god <laughs> I know the sun. The sun is changing. I think there's like a sun beating. Like it's kind of cool. Now. Yeah, look at this. You're like I told you. You're royalty, girl. This is just lighting you up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love it. I love it. No, this was amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time, and uh, all the best of luck to uh, everything you got going in your new projects. And I hope um, I, I know you'll. You know, just based on everything you're doing, I'm sure it's it's going to be amazing, and I can't wait to see it. And yeah, this has been amazing. Thanks. So thank you so much for your time. And is there somewhere that we can eat your food in, in the DFW area? Or no, I don't cook anymore. I'm out of the game. Oh, I, I oh, yes, okay. uh, look, I did it for years and years and years, and I just oh. it happens. You get burnt out, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying I won't go back to it because I get asked yeah. all the time. Um, yeah, I'm not saying I won't go back to it, but I'm I'm a podcaster now. So oh, okay, all right. I, mean, I, I guess we'll see. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what that's <laughs> okay, what they well, pay cool. me. I don't know. That's what it says on the check. I, I just go with it. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's cool. <laughs> listen, I get to talk to amazing people like yeah. you. Like, it's seriously the amount of people that I've spoke to from all different backgrounds. And it's, the, it's honestly been one of the greatest experiences of my life to have all these wonderful awesome. conversations with all these wonderful people that I would never get to speak to. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And not just five yeah. minutes, right? So, yes, like yourself, this has been absolutely well, thanks amazing. for having me on. Oh, this was awesome. This was awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we'll reach out and let you know when the episode goes out. And again, okay. thank you again so much. Uh, best of luck on the new year, 2023. Hope it All rocks. Right, same to you. Thank you so much, Don. All right. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Lone Star Play podcast with your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. For more info, go to LoneStarPlate.show.